Crime is an important topic. It affects our lives and our societies in a big way. And I think people's ideas about crime and what causes it and what we should do really shapes a lot about their worldview. So I think it's pretty critical to have an understanding of crime and to dispel myths. And what's nice is you can offer some pushback about crime. People talk about crime in the abstract. You can push back against some of the narratives, some of these ideas, and not get canceled in the same way as if you were talking about other issues. First, let's start off with the goofiest notions. You'll hear some people say something like, Oh, crime exists as a consequence of modern exploitative capitalism, or something like that. Now, maybe you don't hear that often, but it is definitely around, especially in all this talk about defunding the police and, you know, what is the police function and all that. When people say this kind of thing, I think it's good to laugh. Now, not to yourself. You should laugh openly and be seen. It's important to understand that this deserves public ridicule, right? If you need justification, maybe the person's asking you why you think it's so stupid, just point out, hey, there's crime today. There was crime in feudal Europe, feudal Japan, ancient Rome, ancient Egypt. We know there was crime and law and punishment in ancient Mesopotamia. There's nothing modern or have anything to do with capitalism or whatever. As long as we have recorded history, people writing stuff down, they've been writing about crime and punishment and laws. And I think it's pretty reasonable to also assume that crime and punishment and laws goes back even before recorded history. And I think that's a fairly safe view because encounters between societies that did record and didn't record, the societies that did record tell us that societies that didn't record had crime and punishment too. Did I word that kind of confusingly? Basically, ancient Romans and Greeks and Egyptians, and they wrote stuff down. They would go around to some of their neighbors who weren't writing things down, and they would tell us about them, right? The ancient Romans would be like, oh, we talked to these people, and here's how they live their life, even if those people weren't writing stuff down. Uh, you can also look at European explorers and settlers. Uh, they wrote stuff down about Native American tribes who weren't recording their history, and they had crime and punishment too. And even when we look at people who weren't recording their history, they would still leave other things, physical evidence and potentially paintings uh, that can be a little bit more ambiguous, but it can still give us insight into their criminal justice system. And, you know, if you just look at oral traditions for any sort of, uh, you know, traditional people who still have some of their oral traditions, most of their oral traditions involves myths and stories that may include some amount of betrayal, crime and punishment, punitive you know, re re repercussions for people who have done wrong. It's crime and punishment, people. But ultimately, you will hear this said either explicitly or implicitly, and I think it's really important to be a voice that speaks out against it. Be the person in the room who's saying, oh, that's, that's total nonsense, and, you know, just laughing at it. The next thing I think that needs to be ridiculed is this belief, and it's sometimes just a euphemism, but I think it needs to be pointed out more explicitly, is that of a bad neighborhood. If you ever say, oh, well, that's kind of a bad area, a rough area. You know, unless the lamp posts and the pavement itself is the one committing the crimes, there's no such thing as a bad area. Just bad people. You have bad neighbors. Places are not more or less criminal People in places are more or less criminal than people in other places. Why does this neighborhood have more violence than that neighborhood? Because the people in this neighborhood are committing more acts of violence. Now, have you ever heard of people saying things like, Oh, we should be like Japan. They're very safe. They have strict gun laws. We should have strict gun laws. Let's take a look at this. Japan has organized crime, right? And we normally call organized crime members gangsters or gang members, right? And America has organized crime, obviously. Gangs in Japan are called Yakuza. The Japan Times reported that Yakuza membership is down to 28,000 members. Now, 28,000 gang members could cause a big heap of trouble, right? That's a lot of people. Now, let's look at Chicago. The most recent numbers from 2012... 
Uh, but I think that number is still pretty good. It's still similar today. The Chicago Crime Commission's handbook says there are more than 150,000 gang members in Chicago. So let's look at that. Japan, 125 million people total, 28,000 gang members. Chicago, 9.5 million people in the metro, 150,000 gang members. Less than a tenth of the population, more than five times the number of gang members. It's not the guns, it's the people. Chicago has a problem. There's a big chunk of the population who wakes up thinking, oh, if, if I see that rival gang member on our turf, you know, I'm gonna go get him, right? Beat him up or kill him or whatever. There are more people in one American city than the entire country of Japan who plan on some amount of crime and violence in their life. They just plan on it. In the morning, they wake up thinking, you know, I, I better not catch one of those guys on our corner or our blocks again. You know, if we embraced communism or whatever these people think we should do, these Chicago gang members aren't going to turn into Japanese florists and grocers and businessmen, right? But one thing that we really need to hit on is the notion that crime is just sort of an aspect of poverty. Criminal activity exists as a method for people to pay their bills, right? That They would say something like, uh, the reason Michigan and Detroit is so criminal is because they're so poor, they can't pay their bills, they're having trouble getting by. People in Vermont are so much less criminal and they have so much less crime because they're having such an easier time paying all their bills. So statistically, we know that poor people are more criminal. And I think most of us have experienced that. You've walked around outside and noticed that. But is it really so simple to say that ending poverty would end crime or poverty is causing crime just because they so often happen together? Now, there's a lot we could talk about here. We could do a statistical analysis. There are lots of factors that influence both poverty and crime together, particularly intelligence, maybe impulsivity, right? These are confounding factors, this sort of third factor that's, you know, really messing with the analysis as we're as some people are trying to draw this sort of causal relationship between poverty and crime. Now, if you want that analysis, there are lots of YouTube videos and studies on it. If you know someone who's actually influenced by data and analysis, go ahead and bring that up to them. You could show them that poverty and crime have other causes. I think most of the people who bring up this sort of poverty causes crime idea, most of those people aren't very fact and data driven in the first place. Maybe, a, maybe some sort of other argument would be better. Maybe the next time that uh, you hear someone say something like Michigan is more criminal than Vermont because of poverty, why not try saying something like, are you sure? Maybe Michigan is just stuck with a bunch more violent people, a bunch more criminals, and that's why they have so much higher crime. And if they still say, no, 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 it's the poverty that's making people criminal, point out that Michigan has a much higher rate of rape. You don't rape people and come home and pay your bills with the rape money. You don't pay your rent with rape. These areas where criminality is high, they don't just engage in crime that has financial benefit, like theft or muggings. There's a lot more senseless fights. There's a lot more property destruction, not just property theft, property destruction, murders, most of which are not financially beneficial, rapes, child abuse. No one gets rich by going home and beating up on their kid, and yet they're doing it. So ask them that. Maybe the next person who tells you that poverty causes crime, ask them how much money a rapist actually makes. And, you know, something to think about. You know, we've seen certain genes implicated in violent criminals, like MAOA. There's a paper, MAOA, Childhood Maltreatment and Antisocial Behavior, Meta-Analysis of a Gene Environmental Interaction. So here's the thing, MAOA gene, right? This gene determines how much of this MAOA enzyme you're going to make, right? You could get a version where you make lots of it. You could have a low amount of the enzyme or a high amount of the enzyme. And a low amount of MAOA enzyme has been linked to highly violent and criminal activity, 
Now, I'm going to read you just the results or part of the results from the first page of this paper. Quote, across 20 male cohorts, early adversity presaged antisocial outcome more strongly for low activity relative to high activity MAOA genotype. Stratified analysis shows the interaction specific to maltreatment and robust in robust to several sensitivity analysis, end quote. So meaning maybe part of the reason Bill or Manuel is so violent, they've been engaging in antisocial crimes, is one, his dad beat him up, right? Early adversity presaged antisocial outcomes. And two, he has his dad's blood, his dad's genes. The combination with the abuse made him more likely to turn to violence. But this doesn't explain all of the difference that the MAOA gene is not the uh, criminal gene and you either have it or you don't. Maybe he's also highly impulsive. Maybe Bill has a time preference for the now. He has an inability to delay gratification, which is associated with criminality. Maybe he's not smart. Intelligence is significantly negatively correlated with violent crime, particularly murder. Life isn't, you know, a television show where the murderers are latent geniuses covering up their tracks. Most murderers are not exactly on the honor roll. We know of a few genetic SNPs associated with intelligence, and not everyone has those same SNPs. Not everyone's got the same genes. Not every group has the same genes. Even if Bill hadn't gotten beaten up as a kid, maybe he'd still turn to violent crime. After all, throughout history, even today, depending where you live, violent individuals may still be important, useful. Sometimes the tribe needs warriors, doesn't it? The point is, when someone says capitalism or economics is the cause of crime, you need to laugh at it publicly. You need to show it's worthy of ridicule. Poverty being the cause of crime needs to be laughed out. When people say one place is bad, this is a bad area, a bad neighborhood, correct them. The people make that place what it is.